I just built this Salesforce clone with one prompt. Okay, a prompt and a nudge. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it today. But here's the twist. Once I built this, I realized this was not what I needed. And this has led me to my biggest breakthrough when it comes to building things with AI and the future of my productivity. I ran a marketing agency for 10 years. We used Salesforce and about a million other tools, but we only used 1% of what they could do. We'd all log into Salesforce and see five tabs we didn't understand, a pipeline that hadn't been updated, and a dashboard full of red warnings that we were ignoring. And then we'd all go back to our spreadsheets, adding one item to our to-do list, update Salesforce. This was such a waste, and further, we were paying dearly for this privilege. So when all these AI coding tools started blowing up, I had a hunch. I wondered if it was actually easier to build a custom CRM these days than it was to implement one of these fancy out-of-the-box solutions. I didn't want to waste any more time or money implementing these products. I'd been there and done that so many times. I wanted something lean, custom, and most importantly, mine. But I had no idea how to actually get there, and deep down, I was kind of afraid I was gonna screw this all up again because I really had no idea where to start. There are a ton of cool AI coding tools out there. Cursor is really cool. I've tried Cursor. It feels a little bit complex for me. It's probably more for a seasoned developer, which I certainly am not. I also tried Bolt New, which is really cool as well, but it felt a little bit out of my control. So eventually I've settled on Replit. For me, Replit really felt like the best choice because it allows you to host whatever you build right there on the platform. It also has two killer AI assistants that I've seen outperform some of the other models in various ways. For me, a non-coder, Replit simply runs, and that's a huge advantage as I'm trying really hard to not waste any more time. So I logged into Replit and gave it this six-word prompt. Build me Salesforce, the CRM application. It went to town. It worked for uh, many minutes. I don't know, maybe a half hour. The only thing I had to do, like I mentioned, was that little nudge right here. It said, hey, this application isn't running. Would you like me to fix the issue? I said, yes, please do. And you can see that is everything in the uh, prompt chain there. This has been deployed, like I mentioned, on Replit. So there's just a few things you need to click to deploy. And here's what it looks like. You can click around. You can update, uh, import, and export different files. Uh, lots of stuff going on here. I was absolutely stunned. This was a real clickable data saving prototype. And for a split second, I thought, this is it. I've cracked it. This AI stuff is magic. I almost stopped and made this YouTube video right then. Build a CRM in 30 minutes. It would have gotten views, but guess what? It would have been BS. One more AI hype video. Because as I started clicking around, I realized that there was some problems with this thing. There was 404 error pages. Buttons were looking funky. And I started thinking to myself, it's a little bit buggy, but you know, not bad. How many AI coding videos have you watched that have ended in, it's a little bit buggy, but you know, not bad. For me nowadays, that translates into, it looks cool, but basically it's a piece of crap and kind of a waste of everybody's time. Deep down, I knew this was garbage and I had a sinking feeling in my stomach. I'm trying hard to make this channel the anti-AI hype channel. And just because it looks like we're 80% done, guess what? We're not even close. This is where building with AI is super deceptive because trying to use AI to fix these tools can actually make the problem worse. Every prompt I gave it, it unraveled a little bit more. I've seen this in writing too. Often you'll get a nice first draft that's 80% there, but when you try to fix it with prompts, it gets worse. And I really had no idea what it was doing as it's trying to fix these bugs. It felt like trying to write a great blog post without even knowing how to read. And that's really when it hit me. I've been trying to build with AI without understanding anything. This feels like a major defeat as I really don't want to learn how to code. I want to skip that hard part. I want to believe all these headlines that say code is dead and don't learn how to code. This mindset has been really holding me back from getting to the next level in my AI journey. I really don't want to become a developer, but I really want to build cool stuff for myself, for my team, and for you guys. So as I was watching these errors pile up, I said to myself out loud, if I actually want to build anything useful, I have to know what this code is doing. So what do I do now? I know that I don't want to start these programs like Learn Python in 21 
21 days. I know I just won't stick with it. But the only other option seemed to be staring at these real coders who were whipping up amazing things in cursor like sorcerers. There's a giant invisible wall between beginners and these AI native builders. And I've been bashing my head against that wall for months, going in these experimental loops and really not getting anywhere. And I'm afraid of wasting any more time learning the wrong stuff, the basic stuff, or building these shiny but useless objects using AI. And this is when the self-doubt really started to kick in. How could I call myself an AI expert if I couldn't build a simple piece of software with AI? It was time to stop pretending. I wanted results, I wanted control, but most importantly, I wanted to stop spending my time on things I would never use. So I made a decision. I wrote down my non-negotiables. Number one, waste as little time as possible. Number two, learn while building things I will actually use. I've wasted months going in circles and I was up at night thinking about what if I pick the wrong thing again. And in fact, it was late at night that I came up with this two-prong approach. Number one is the bottom-up approach, where I'm gonna let AI walk me through building these super simple, minimal scripts that help me get stuff done throughout my day. And number two is the top-down approach, where I'm gonna let AI build fancy stuff and then make sure it walks me through what it did so I understand as much as possible. I've also been loading up other people's code bases and doing the same thing with them, and I've got a great example of that later in the video. This is really like having a patient mentor that never Get sick of my dumb questions. Like I said, I'm not trying to become a developer. I'm just trying to build the things that I need without wasting another year. And this just feels like the right path forward. So the next step was to figure out what do I need? My absolute favorite book on this topic is The Agile Samurai. It has a great framework for getting clarity on what you're trying to build. So I recently converted that framework into a custom GPT to help with this. I'm going to show you how you can get access to this custom GPT in just a minute. But first, let me show you how this works. You just open it up and click Let's Begin, and it just starts firing questions at you, starting with, you know, why are we here? What are you thinking about building? And working all the way through your problem statement and your elevator pitch, etc. This is called your inception deck in the book, The Agile Samurai. This thing acts like a grizzled agile coach and forced me to get specific really quickly. This thing pulled me through 10 amazing steps and ended with this specification doc with some minimal features that I actually think I can pull off. But now that I know what to build, how am I gonna do it? I already knew I was gonna use Replit because of the hosting and the awesome AI, but I didn't want it to pick the coding language and the tech stack with without my knowledge. So I did a lot of digging into figuring out what the best tech stack for me would be to learn. And I noticed that anytime these AI systems built anything that looked really cool, it was using this SHADCN. I really don't know how to say this, S-H-A-D-C-N. And I knew that I wanted that to be a piece of it. So I dug deeper and found out that this is part of the JavaScript world and there are some other handy tools related to the javascript world that seem to be coming up a lot when i'm building things with ai you'll notice whether you're building in claude or chat gpt it often builds these react elements which are also related to javascript um, so that seemed really helpful. Then I came across this Next.js, which is built by Vercel, which seemed to be also part of that ecosystem that could be pretty interesting to leverage. Further, on a recent Lex Friedman podcast with an expert coder named the Primogen, he talks about JavaScript being the best language for beginners to start with. So that was another major point in that direction. But that wasn't enough. I still had to do hours of back and forth with the AI before confirming that, yes, JavaScript, React, Next.js, that's the tech stack that I'm interested in. There's a link in the description to a cheat sheet for this video. I create a cheat sheet for every single video that I make, and this particular cheat sheet goes way more in depth into this particular tech stack among other things. That cheat sheet and over 125 others are all instantly available to anybody who supports me on Patreon. So now that I had clarity on what to build and how to build it, things started to really click. Replit and I have built a couple different prototypes. They're not flashy, they're not fancy, but they're mine and they're useful. This is one that merges my MailChimp data with my Patreon data to help me get a grasp of that. And Replit and I 
I are now working on a dashboard for all of this information as well. So they're not nearly as flashy as this Salesforce example, but they work. I kind of understand what's going on and they are mine. I can read the code and say, yeah, I kind of understand what's going on there and I can make subtle changes without breaking everything. And not long ago, that used to feel impossible. They're not magical, they're not perfect, but they're useful. Along with that, I'm working through these 75 practical JavaScript projects for beginners. This is that bottom up approach that I was talking about, just building out the basic sales dashboard and all these other different small little snippets of code that I'm actually using the AI to coach me on how I can build these myself. That's all in the cheat sheet along with so many other resources here. It starts with a deep comparison of different AI code tools so you can pick out which one works best for you. You. Further details about the tech stack that I picked out. A really killer SaaS app template that you can explore in that top-down approach. Let me show you this. This is a template for a really professional looking SaaS product that has basically everything but the SaaS in there. So loading this into Replit and asking Replit to walk you through how it's working can be a killer way to start building your own web applications. That's that top-down approach I spoke about. I've also got a link to that Agile Samurai bot that I walked you through and to my Learn Anything bot, which is my custom GPT for rapid skill acquisition. That's all in the cheat sheet with a lot more that we didn't have time to get into. So for me, the future doesn't look like no code. It looks more like just enough code. And yeah, I was able to build Salesforce really fast, but I basically threw it in the garbage the next day. Now I'm building slower, I'm building smarter, and for once, these tools are starting to feel like they're actually mine. And that Learn Anything bot has been super handy as I've been trying to figure all this stuff out. It's not fancy, but it's really kept me from giving up along the way. Here's another video all about that. It's one of my older videos, but it's one of my all-time favorites. I'll see you over there. Make the green.